talked about. Um, so that's what that is there for. So we are now recording. And I wanted to start off with my why. And if you've been to one of my sessions, I always start off with the why, because it's so important for us to have a purpose. And um, my, would your students show up if they didn't have to by Dave Burgess? author of Teach Like a Pirate. This is in his book. It's a, a common theme in his in his stuff. And that's how I feel. I, I It really resonated with me. And I think about my two children and I want them to love school. And the school that I grew up in was great for me in the 1980s and 90s. Okay. It was wonderful for me then. But if my children were to have to go to that school, my children now have to do that very same thing it would be an injustice to them and they would probably redecorate the place, not in a good way, okay? Um, and so I think about where I grew up and how I grew up with, with school and learning and how that's not programmed for my children, okay? So I am on a mission to make learning fun and a happy, and school's a really happy place. And, you know, for the most part, they really are. But, you know, we really got to sit with this question, would your students show up if they didn't have to last year during the pandemic? Because guess what? They really didn't have to. And some of them didn't. So I hope that you have taken that valuable time to evaluate and not point fingers or anything like that, but kind of reflect and go, why didn't they show up? What could we have done differently? So this has been my first slide for many presentations for several years now, but it is more meaningful than ever. So that is my why. And today is administrators or communicators. And let me tell you, uh, nothing can make or break a school more than an administrator who cannot communicate with staff. Okay. They will, they will, it will be a meeting. Okay. So today we're going to work on that. So today we're going to share the good news. And if you are tweeting, we're going to use the hashtag NC bold. And I missed a couple on there. You can do hashtag NC ed or hashtag NC DTL, which is North Carolina digital teaching and learning. Um, and then I put mine on here. So if you um, want to, share something with me, you can stick that on there as well. So before you have any time with learners, you really need to connect with them. So on a scale from David to David, how are you feeling? Go ahead and put in the chat a number that represents how you are feeling today. How are you feeling? I started out at a seven, okay? And then I had a little rough spout. My son is going to Camp Trinity next week, and I got a call from the from his um, the coordinator of the camp and said, "Miss Serkin, we do not have your child's medical records for camp, and it ne he needs a physical." And I was like, "Okay, no problem." So in between sessions, I called the the um, I called the doctor's office and they're like, he hasn't had a physical since 2019. Mother of the year over here, scrambled, scrambled, scrambled and found someone. So now I'm better, but I was almost at a one. <laughs> Wasn't going to make it. But now I'm at a seven and by the end, we're going to be at an eight together. Okay. How about those apples? So good to know. We are going, let's look at your standards. Now, Hang with me for this a little bit because I know that you know your standards, but I want you to look at your standards through the eyes of communication. Okay, so you've seen these for these are your digital learning competencies, competencies for administrators, and we're going to look at each one. And it might be a little painful because you've seen them before, but I just want you to look at them briefly and think about them through the lens of communication where that skill will come in handy, okay? So we're gonna start with content and instruction. I just want you to look at it 
and then put in the chat, where do you see communication? And I promise you, I'm going to take you somewhere after this. But right now, I want you to, to have a little reflection time with your, with your deal standards. Where do you see, where do you see communication? Where do you, where can you read between the lines and see communication? Okay, I'm going to move on to the next one because we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. Yes, it's in the first white box. But there's other things in between the lines that communication would come in handy. Let's look at vision and strategy. Where would vision and strategy find? I mean, why? how could that being a good communicator help you with these standards? You can put something in the chat if you want, or you can just reflect, which is fine. All right, moving on to the next one. Human capacity and culture. Where do you see communication? Where is communication so important? Yes, Erin. Thanks, Daniel. All right, moving on to the next. Yes. Personal growth and connectedness. Okay, we're going to go for the last one. Community. Yes, Dalton. Okay, so you saw the word communicate in several pieces, but there are also other words for, that were synonymous with good communication. Advocate, cultivate, support. I'm not going to read this to you. You went to college. You, if you're an administrator, you have a master's degree of some sorts. These are all things that you have to do to be successful communicators. And it's built in. And they use some great words, but we're going to put those words into action. Okay. So back when I was in school and learning how to communicate in the, in my technology classes and George, George's name is cov covered up here, but um, look at that memorandum. Look at that. It doesn't matter what it says right? It's in a different language, but that doesn't matter because it's boring, right? If you look at that, it's not going to grab your attention quite as much as what it should because communication looks different than it did back then. This is what communication looks like, right? All different forms, so many different ways. They talk about you need five different streams of income, 
Well, we communicate in way more streams than that. Okay. So I want you to look at this, this hexagonal diagram of how connected we are more than ever in all the different ways that we can communicate with each other and have that really and build those really rich relationships because you and I both know that that is the foundation for a good school is strong relationships. So what is the main form of communication in your school? Go ahead and just let us know. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. And you can think about communication with teachers, parents, students, the community, your boss, whatever. Okay, lots of emails, which is fine. And because really that's an efficient way to communicate. But does your email always have to look the same? Mm -hmm. Oh, Daniel, how, how many people do you have in your, in your small school? I want to see if it, oh, okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, when I first started teaching in Ash County, I taught in the basement of a trailer. And I, we had one teacher per grade level, except for in kindergarten, which I had the luxury of being the kindergarten in a half. I was the, in the half class. And I only had nine kids. <laughs> so um, I've been there. I understand. Yes, that was very face to face. And half of them were related. So that a lot of their communication happened at the kitchen table. So let's think about communication and how we can do it more efficiently than we've ever done before and um, how we can make it a little more fun. Um, no one likes sitting in really long meetings. That's something I think that that's been a silver lining of COVID, wouldn't you say? That I feel like it shortened those somewhat and it's made us really rethink our time and appreciate our time a little more. So let's think about if you should hold a meeting or not. It's a pretty good flow, right? So I'm going to share with you some digital tools that I feel like are very helpful with streamlining your communication, keeping your audience with your communication, making it fun and enticing. And really, I want you to think about your, your position. You are a marketer. Your teachers are marketers. We're, we're all selling something here. And, um, you, how many times have, have you had a situation where you've sent an email out and someone comes up to you and goes, they ask you a question and you're like, oh, I sent an email about that. And you say, and you, you think to yourself, why aren't they reading my emails? Well, they're, they might be boring, not to hurt your feelings. Yes, never hold a meeting unless you need all those people in the same place at the same time to do something they need to be together to do. Yes, that's the truth. But um, so many times, and I find myself sending out an email here and there, and people will ask me something, and I'm thinking, I sent that in an email, and it can really get you. So if you can work on the flavor, kind of think of them as recipes, and you have different forms for making it not boring, giving, making it a little tasty, um, that can help. So I use Loom a lot. There's tons, everything that I show you, there's probably an alternative to, okay? There's, this is not a secret. This stuff is not secret. This is not um, anything so new and flashy, but it's just, I put it all together to share with you at one time. So I really like Loom because number one, it's free for teachers all the time. Number two, there's no time limits. Now, I caution you, don't make your videos over five minutes. Nobody wants to see that. You don't need seasons episode one, two, three. Okay. Um, so keep them short and sweet, but get your point across. So if it's something that you need to explain, a Zoom, uh, not a Zoom, but a Loom would is really helpful for that. 
One of the great things about Loom is it doesn't crowd up your, your Google Drive. I've heard that we're not going to, um, in our district anyway, in Carteret, um, we don't have unlimited space anymore in our Google, Google Drive. So that's really good because videos take up a lot of space. But if I go to Loom, I can look at all the videos that I've made and it gives them a heading and I can look and see how many people have viewed them and all that. And it's not clouding up my Google Drive. I'm not a very organized person in my Google Drive, so I really appreciate having a separate space to find these videos when I need to. And it just gives you a link. Let's say you want to use your Google Drive. You can download every video that you have in Loom and it's free for teachers forever, which is really great. How many of you guys use Loom or what do you use as a video platform for you to communicate? You can turn your mic off or you can throw it in the in the chat. And I do feel like now that we've had this pandemic, we have gotten into a situation where companies are realizing that there's a need for things. So, or they may go, oh, I really like that. I'm going to make one like it, but a little better. So I feel like the noise for communication tools online is getting pretty thick. Like there, there's lots of things popping out and, you know, with that comes innovation. So we write, really might come out with something even better, but I like, I like Loom for its simplicity and everything else. And you can use it um, you can, when you're using Loom, you can record just with your camera or you can do your screen or you can do your screen in your camera and it has like a little think bubble at the bottom in a circle. Screencastify does a rectangle and that's why I prefer Loom because <laughs> I like circles. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Okay, so next. So I used to make these newsletters for my staff every week. Um, and they were, they were beautiful. I spent forever on them. I'd bring it home and work on it at night and I'd spend forever on these newsletters. And then, um, someone said, and I really appreciated their honesty. And she said, it was Christy. And she said, um, Marcia, your newsletters are a little overwhelming and you send them every week. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? And part of me was hurt a little because, I um, worked really hard on them, but on this, in the same token, it was really good feedback for me to say, okay, not everyone is reading this. Maybe I can change the format a little bit. Maybe I can condense. Maybe I can spread the love because really, all and truly, it was difficult for me to come up with something for every week. So I could have spaced it out and scheduled it a little more thoughtfully. Instead, I just pop stuff in there as it popped into my head, which there's a lot going on up here, y'all. Okay, so this right here, I started using instead of a newsletter, I did a Hey Y'all board because that's something that I say with this thick North Carolina born and bred in Yatkin County accent, um, this bulletin board. And so I would put a little video on there instead of a letter in my newsletter, I put like a, a pager letter on there telling them how much I love them and you know, like some kind of to do. And then I would have a page, a page, a page, a page, a page of different things. So all in all, this right here is probably about the same information, about the same amount of information as my other newsletter, but it doesn't take up as much space. And this particular bulletin board came from Slides Mania, which is a great place for with templates. There's a lady in Spain and she just makes templates for fun. She is not a graphic designer by, by trade. She does something else. I think she's in banking and she makes templates for fun. So you can go on Slides Mania and find tons of templates, bulletin boards, backgrounds. You could even just search a background on Google really and pull up a bulletin board. So, but I found this as a template. Yes, Slides Mania is awesome and it's free. And you know, that's something that she says. She says, I want everyone to use my stuff, but I do not want you to sell it. So there, if you see something on the TPT and it has Slides Mania, you know that she did not want that to happen because she wants it to be free for everyone all the time. And she's amazing. Yes, she was on, Stacey, you probably saw it too. She did a, a podcast with Matt Miller. 
and they talked about it and I just soaked it up. I just listened. So here's this. I, I always put their standards in my newsletter up there in the corner so that if they want to see it, they can go and look at it too. And then I always put something in my newsletter that um, encourages them to share. So I have our hashtags here for hashtag Rose Rocks, that's for our school, and then hashtag Shine the Light. If you have a hashtag for your school or your district, put it in the chat and we'll follow it and see what's going on. A hashtag is just a great way to organize um, your post. So I can go now on Facebook. We do a lot of Facebook for our school. And I can go on Facebook and type in hashtag Rose Rocks and I can see everything that has been posted with Rose Rocks that's public. We encourage our parents to use the hashtag Rose Rocks, our teachers, everybody. And even like when we're just, when a parent or a kid will say something that they've, that they've accomplished and they're really proud, they're like, hashtag Rose Rocks. So it's kind of like, it's just a feeling. So we, we've really developed that in a good way. So in my little video, I also put in a little meaning behind the link so that they just don't see a bunch of pictures. I'll say, look here for this, look here for this, kind of like the SNL marble columns. Look at this one, look at this one. So that's where we're going. Good, I like your hashtags. Max awesome, that's great. <laughs> okay, so one of the really neat things about that particular newsletter that I put on the Hey Y'all board is I make it in Google Slides, okay? So when you use Google Slides, you can track who sees your stuff. Not to be nosy, but it gives you a sense of, okay, someone's looking at this, someone's using it, um, this is helpful, this is being revisited. So you go to Tools and then the Activity Tracker, and then when you click on the Activity Tracker, it will give you trends that you can look at. So I can see from this one right here that it was looked at a lot on May 26th, and then people are revisiting it. And that's really helpful for me because then I can see, I can kind of look at that content and say, okay, I might need to revisit this content a little more to be more helpful for my staff too, or maybe leave some of the things back up there. You can look at um, the, with the viewers, if you look at, if you click on viewers, if they're using their Google account, which you have to, to get into your stuff, then you can see exactly who's looked at it a lot. So you can, if you are an administrator or a facilitator of sorts, you know who is really interested in what you're selling and who you can have some like really rich conversations with too. So it's not to be a Snoopy, but it's also, it's just to, you know, know what's working. Another thing that I really like to do is I like to change things into bitlies and, um, Bitly is great because you can put a sharing link in, or let's say you have a website and you want to use a sharing link for that. You can go into Bitly and, and click create and change. Um, give it a unique name. If you've set up a free, see, that says free because if it is free, it is for me. Um, if you go in to Bitly you, and make an account, you can create your own Bitly that are unique to your situation. And then you can go in and look at those analytics for particular links. I use this for, let's say the PTO, this one was wild about water cleanup. I used that, it was bit.ly slash ways water. And that had a lot of clicks on it. And I can go and look and see how many people have clicked on it. Um, and just see if it's really getting the traffic that I want it to get. So um, use, use those analytics to your favor because you don't have time to say, did you get my email? Did you look at this? This does it for you. And there are some paid programs that you can do this with as well, but this is free. So try it out. And if you want more information, 
from your analytics. If you need more, then try one of those paid pieces. But I find that this is pretty useful for me to make sure that I am being an effective communicator. So that is really helpful for me. Is there, does anybody else use anything else that um, gives them some good feedback in analytics? I know. Go ahead. I used Bitly from the beginning and never had any reason to change from it. So it's been great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really wanted to do s'more. I really wanted to really um, use that, but I just, I was like, ah, it's really pretty, but I can use what I have and, and um, be fine. I don't need to need, know anymore. Now, if I were monetizing everything, maybe I would need to know a little more. <laughs> All right. So let's look. These are two pieces of information. The same piece of information. Okay. If you were scrolling through Facebook as a parent, which one would you more likely be um, in tune to? The right one. Um, and I promise you that the color on the right one wasn't as light. Sometimes when you do screenshots, it kind of takes itself a little, a little further, but it takes and segment, segments the amount of information into sh short little snippets, but also it's pretty. It's visually ap um, appeasing. So these are the same types of information, and we... Um, we have several, we have a couple of people on our social media account and one person did it this way and another did it the other. And the one with the color got eight times as many clicks as the other thing. So, and comments. So it's definitely important to make sure that your stuff is appealing. We, so we're going to talk about that a little bit and go through some of your design. And some of you are probably, a lot of people are already using this stuff. Again, I'm not selling you any magic. I'm just putting it together for you to think about. Um, this right here is from the Urban Institute. I am in a data class right now that I have a love-hate relationship with. Um, but this really popped out to me. We were studying research papers and what they call the dusty shelf report and how people will pour all their hearts and minds into these research papers and then they they get published and they get put in a book in a library and they never get touched again and um, this piece from the urban institute um, came up in one of our sessions and it just really spoke to me um, different types of mediums give you different amounts of audience and look at social media there. And I would be interested to see if we could see what this looks like when it comes to images, videos, and I'm sure it's out there. I just haven't seen it. Um, like what types of social media reaches the largest audience. But this really spoke to me and I felt like I needed to share it. But it's from the Urban Institute and just says, you know, this is how you meet your people. This is how you get the people. So with social media, you do not, it used to be, if you wanted something to look decent, you had to really work hard and you had to spend a long time on it. But now there are so many great free digital tools out there that really take the cake and you don't, it, it's silly to spend a forever amount of time on your designs and on your stuff. So that one white oak piece that was colorful was created in Canva and it's my best friend. I love Canva. I love it. And with Canva as an educator, if you have the educator that, um, educator email, you get the premium 
with um, with Canva. So, is there anybody that would like? I, I wasn't sure with this crowd if you would want to kind of see a little more of Canva or if you've been there, done that. So speak up if you would like to see some more Canva, if you would like to see how this works. I wasn't, I don't want to show you things that you already know about, but I don't want you to feel afraid. Okay, good. We've got someone that wants to see it a little more. And yes, it is great. It really makes you look polished. Um, so, hey, Marcia, just real quick. Um, uh -huh. I love Canva. Would love to hear everything that you want to present about it, but I have a really just random question. That's fine. What did you submit to them for, to get the educator account? Because I sent them something under my Catawba Schools, you know, as a Catawba Schools person, mm -hmm. and they rejected me. I was really? Like, yeah. yeah. Huh. I, you know, I did it like two years ago. So I don't know what I you put in there that, that made it more acceptable. Hmm. I don't know. I don't, I, you know, I, I have my badge and um, I, I did it one time and I can't even remember what I sent in. And then I got busy and I've just kind of been making do with, you know, the free account. The free account is great, like, like mm -hmm. what you just get for free. But I would like to, you know, try it again. Um, right. Because every once in a while you want that free little gra or that, you know, you know, graphic that's got the little crown on it. Or, mm -hmm. you know, something, you know, with a little bit of extra pizzazz. And, right. Um, and a lot of their animated pieces um, require the free not the required the extra now the okay extra, i'll do that extra. on twitter and see if maybe they just say oh yeah yeah yeah," because i just got an email back and i was like oh okay and then i got busy and i didn't pursue it but yeah uh, well you know um a good print one of my favorite principals of all time told me something she said marcia don't let no stop you you're maybe you're just not asking the question the right way <laughs> So, ask the question a different way. I know, way. and it's just, it's too. Yeah, and you, you don't have time. Right. You know, your time is valuable. So, we're going to take a, just a little quick tour through Canva, just to calm your fears, and you can see that this is really a great space. So, I've logged into Canva.com, and there's so much and I okay so I'm gonna full disclosure you're gonna see all my designs and I have I'm very involved in my church so I have a lot of church things on here too um someone decided I needed to be the communications person for the United Methodist Women so there's a lot of that in there um but there's educational presentations and these are like next level okay they have animations behind your words, things that before we had to spend a lot of time on learning the code and learning um, the scripts to get it to where it needed to be. There's so, there's so much out there, but this is, these are just educational presentations. So these are like Google Slides. So you have your slide deck down here and these are little templates that you can use and just put your information in. So everybody's going to be having their beginning of the school meeting this year. We are kicking off and you're happy that you can be in the same room and you don't have to be six feet apart. So level it up a little bit and they're going to be like, Ooh, how did you do that? And um, you're going to be like a Canva, Canva. You can, you can do that. Or you can just say, I've been working on it all summer. It took me hours. However flow you want to go. Okay. But there's so much with that. Um, let's see. My network is kind of slow, and I think it's just because I'm running a virtual meeting at the same time. So there's videos. I did a video for our Welcome to Kindergarten for the district this year. We had, we got a new um, district person in charge of communication, but he didn't come in until later, and they're like, we need somebody to make a video for our Welcome to School. So these are great because look here you add 
you add in just you just drag and drop and change your words but it's animated so look i'm going to click the play button so you can see it brings it all together and it looks like you spent forever on it but it's really someone else did it so there these are great and you just drag and drop them over really awesome stuff let's see take a couple i'll show you a couple more things lots of you know infographics are huge lots of infographics i one thing that i really like to do is you'll see the watermark on on stuff here's carter county schools i like to get a watermark for our school and for our district and i put that information i put that on there so they know it's official so there's our kindergarten registration picture but you can really here's stuff the bus we're about to have a great time with that um, for our district really fun stuff but it just gets it out there plus also you can send one image instead of typing up all the information. So now one image, you can put it on your website. You can put it in email. You can put it on your social media. You can put it, um, you can print a card and put it in the mail. So many things with one image that you make on Canva instead of creating it five or six different ways in different times. So I've really found that helpful. Now I'm not, I'm not a worksheet fan, but I'm going to show you this and know that you will use this for good and not evil. Um, they have their place. Oh, look, that's something completely different. There is, there are templates in here that have like, there's worksheets, but lesson planning worksheets certificates, bookmarks, schedules, all sorts of things that you can have and put together and it's not boring. Well, there's some more, made some of these. So let's look at science. So this is not a high depth of knowledge, but let's say you have a kid in your office that needs to cool off time for a minute and give them a great barrier reef word search and that's okay. That's all right. But there's also lesson planning templates and, um, you know, everybody, so many people spend so much money. I don't know where they get, they get their money because I'm a state employee and I'm a, I can't afford it. But, um, I love, I love the lesson planning pieces because it's like the Erin Condren stuff, and but it's free and it's just right here. So that's really cool. So let's click here. There's so much in Canva that's awesome. And you have brand kits here. And what that is, is let's say you want to stick to a certain color scheme and certain stationery. They have kits that look like, like, look at these two things. It's two different things, but they have the same theme going on. You can do that um, with those. So they've got some cool stuff in there. Check it out. It's free. You get the premium if they're not saying no these days. Um, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Want some more of it. And I... Another thing that's really cool about Canva, I don't know if you knew this, but with Canva, you can use it on your phone too. So sometimes I'll have to go in and edit something. I can do that on my phone, which is pretty neat. Here's some examples of how we've used Canva. This is, I um, was having PD for the, for the day on one of our work days, and I could have easily just gave them a list or sent them a video on my on my news board, my Hey Y'all board, but instead I, it looked like an invitation. My teachers love invitations. Um, so here were these sessions. Um, and then for Flex Week, we sent this out on our social media on different things that they could do on Flex Week. Another one that is, I feel like it's just as good, but it hasn't gotten as much attention as Canva is Adobe Spark. And 
if you are an Adobe Photoshop fan, Adobe Spark is for you because it has a lot of those extra little quirks that you can do with your photos um, as you put them in your documents and communication pieces. But it, I mean, it's just as good as Canvas, as Canva. It is definitely better than Canvas, <laughs> but it's, it's just as good as Canva. Does anybody, or do we have any big Adobe Spark fans in here? I haven't done this yet, but there is an Adobe Spark component and it looks like they just added it to Canva, but there's an Adobe Spark component where you can use this with students. Um, and it's free for schools that have Microsoft. You have to talk to your district about getting that, um, getting everybody, like all the users and stuff loaded in there. But um, Adobe Spark is really cool for that. You can put kids in there and give them opportunities to be creative and work on being a good communicator too. We've raised generations of people who are not good communicators. And I think that's, that's a problem. Being a good communicator is advocating for yourself. So I am on the run all the time, not from the law, just taking my kids wherever they need to go. I'm like the taxi or going to a meeting here and there all over the place. Um, and type rama is my jam, y'all. And it is a free app that I love. I it, If you use the free you get most of the fonts and it puts a little typorama watermark on your picture. But if you do not want that watermark, I think it's $4. It, I mean, well, I did this years ago, so it may be a little more, but it's not much. It's totally worth it. Um, I have a side business. My husband has a business um, cutting metal. He has like a CNC machine, can make monograms and he makes business signs and stuff. So I use a lot of, do a lot of advertising with Typerama. So I took, I paid the extra five bucks to get the watermark taken off. But Typerama is a little app and you, you don't, you do not have to do any of the designing. Okay. You just type in what you want to say and then you pick a font and it makes it look fun like that. You see where it says life, life is too short to wait. And it looks like it's been written in the sky. It does that for you. You don't have to make it look like that. It just does it. It's magic. I told you I wasn't giving you magic today. I think Typerama may break that rule. Typerama is magic. Okay. It makes it awesome. And it saves everything for you. And you can um, copy and re and edit. And it can automatically save to your social media if you want to. It's so connected. So here is how we have used Typerama. So I do this from my phone. I'm all over the place in my school. I teach three classes a day. And then the other three, the other half of the day, I'm all over the place helping people, taking pictures, coaching, um, I don't know, managing the lost and found. There's so many things that um, is, is in our day. So for this one, I did these little boxes and here are just screenshots of my phone where I've taken collages and put the words right across or right here's where our PTO sent did a um, taco bar for us. That's definitely all these are definitely pre-COVID. And, you know, we put our hashtag on there and just moved it around. And I didn't really have to do anything but put it where I wanted it to be. But there's so many different font combinations that it's just, it's so fun. It's really fun. If you want to make inspirational posters, you can stick that in there. But I like to do it when I'm on the run, just on my phone. It is, you can't do it on your computer, but it does work on an iPad. They also have a, a component called Video Rama. And you can, with the Video Rama, you can add different filters. You can do that with this too add different filters and it's in the video form. I use my iPad a lot, so I use iMovie, but it, it's pretty good. 
Any questions about Typer Rama? Has anyone has anyone here used Typer Rama before? I want to know if I'm showing you something that you don't already know. I want to know these things. Good, good. Um, if you'll look right there on that screen in the bottom right hand corner, there's a stamp. You can put your watermark in there too, so that well, your brand in there, like a PNG file, which is is clear. If you don't know what that what a PNG file is, find your ITF; they can help you. But um, you can have your your brand in there, your logo, and stick it straight there on your pictures and move it around to where exactly you were, where you want it to be. But it is an awesome, awesome little app. It's like the secret sauce. So Social Media. This is one of my very favorite books by Jennifer Queso Todd. I have it, I have, I have two copies. I have the Kindle version and I have one that I read and I take to parent conferences. If I have a student who's doing something, who's done something ugly online, I take the book Social Media with me to the conference so I can reference and, and share some things with them. And also to talk my principal off the ledge when she wants to shut down the internet. I love her to pieces, but sometimes she's like, can you just turn the internet off? No, Miss Brett, I can't. That's not good. For, <laughs> that's not good for schools. But we have to just kind of think of social media social media in a different way as, as social media. Okay, so social media is an opportunity to change the world for good. George Curie says that. He's awesome. And I really feel like that's the case. And I love taking pictures of my food and things, but if I can share great things going on in schools, I can help change the dialogue about schools. And maybe one day we'll get a raise. Um, you know, all of these things. So our when we are communicating online, we are representing our employers. We're representing our parents and our grandparents. My children went to the beach with some friends today. And when they left, I said, remember whose you are. Remember who you are and remember whose you are so that when they're going to the beach, they're not acting a fool. Well, that's kind of how social media is. You have to, when you're online and you know this, you guys are administrators, you have no privacy. Okay. So if you're online, you have, you need to be in control of the dialogue and share goodness and greatness. Okay. So social media, we're going to, kind of reprogram our brains again. Don't be afraid of it. There are some scary things, but don't be afraid of it. Think of it as a way for you to brand yourself as a professional. Okay. I love Tabitha Brown, by the way. She's gotten me saying okay all the time. We went to high school together. If you know Tabitha Brown, she's really awesome. But when she speaks to us in the world on her social media, she goes, okay, <laughs> and, and I've just picked it up as a bad habit. I love Tabitha Brown. She's from Eden, North Carolina, y'all. She's amazing. So I picked up that habit and I have her to thank, but I don't have her money that comes with it. So culture of collaboration with social media. Our school, we have a, for those who have Facebook, we have a private group within Facebook. And it's been very helpful because this summer, Teachers do not want to, they don't, they're not friends with the email, okay? They don't want to look at that. There, I should have put a TikTok video on here that I saw the other day that had somebody saying, I'm tired. I'm not checking your email. I am off the clock. Well, guess what? They will check their Facebook, okay? So come up with a, um, a great group that's closed. You see it's private. Invitation only. We do not just let anybody in here, okay? And when you retire, we love you, but we're going to let you go. So this is just for current employees, and we put things in there. One of our administrators, and I wish I'd, gosh, I wish I'd have done this. One of our administrators gave everybody an alligator, a little toy alligator. And this week, you're supposed to take a picture with your alligator, but it's not an alligator. He's an educator. 
and you're supposed to take fun pictures with your educator so that we all know what everyone's doing this summer. And I thought that was the cutest thing. Take that, take that and use it because that is goodness, okay? Um, but this is our Wildcat staff news. And we, if something goes out in the email over the summer, it goes in the, in the Wildcat staff news online so that everyone can see it too. But it goes email, it goes Wildcat staff news. If people don't have social media, you know, you can't lead a horse, you can lead a horse to water. I understand. Um, everybody has their reason and that's their business, but this is a great place for people to share too. Okay, so think about professional growth. Now, I've this is my fourth session, okay? Maybe fifth. I think it's my fifth, but I repeated one. And every session I go, how many of you are on Twitter? I want to follow you. I want to learn it. And I would say 75 to 80% are not on Twitter. And let me tell you, you are missing out. You're missing out. Now, it takes a little time, but your return on investment is so much more. Okay. So Twitter is, is a great place for professional growth, but it's also a great, another great avenue for you to share the goodness of what is going on in your school. Something that we always say when we are in schools, we say, what, if you could have anything more, if you could have more of anything, what would it be? And time and money are those things. Okay. You go on Twitter. What if everybody in your district, in your district went on Twitter and posted one great thing that they did that day, one great thing that happened in their school that day. And you, at the end of the day, you look and you see what's going on great in your district. You see what's going on great in your state. You, let's say your classrooms are posting. You see what's going on great in your school, okay? You know who else is on Twitter? The state superintendent. Tag her so she can see the great things that are going on in North Carolina schools. There's way more good than bad. And we can control the dialogue. We can control the greatness that is going on. You know who else is on Twitter? Your representatives. Let them see the goodness that is in your school. Um, there's so much goodness that's there. Plus also, I use it when I'm helping people. When I'm in a coaching situation and someone says, Marsha, my children are struggling in fourth grade fractions. What do I do? What should I do? Well, I could go to the crosswalks. I've done that before for DPI. But I also like to just go into Twitter and type in fourth grade fractions. Let's see what everyone is doing today with fourth grade fractions in the world. And you know what? Not everybody's posted on Twitter. Okay. But most of your people who are taking the time to do that are strong advocates for kids and they're pretty darn good teachers too. So it's a great way for you to help that teacher do a walkthrough of all of the great ways that other teachers are teaching fourth grade fractions because they're taking pictures and they're showing it out. Ooh, no barriers hashtag. Thank you. We'll be looking at that. So we're going to take a little more look at Twitter. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my journey because I didn't just arrive at this. It took me some time, okay? I used to be White Oak Wildcats. And when I would go to a conference or a meeting, they would say, get out your computers and tweet about a reflection of what you have learned today. And then I would get out there and I would go and I'd be like, oh, what's my username? Oh, Woe's Wildcats. Okay. What's my password? Oh, let me get out my notebook that has my passwords. And then I would do that and I'm like, oh, I don't have my notebook. Oh, forget password. That could be you. And if it was you too, if it's you too, that's okay. We've all been there. Now I'm on there all the time and I don't need to know my password. It's just there. Um. And then I also, look, look at me. I look like a psoriasis patient as white at Wildcats. Look at those yellow eyeballs. That's not me. I'm not going to be bound to White Oak Elementary School for the rest of my life. Okay? I'm a professional, and I need to make a change. So 
That was White Oak Wildcats in 2016, and I chose to be me, Marsha Circuit. And George Kuros really helped me arrive at that. Now, his picture is different because this has been, I've had this slide for a while. But he said, when you come up with your, when, when you develop your Twitter account, it needs to be you as a professional. It needs to be your name. Your little mini blurb right there needs to be something inspiring about you. You. It doesn't have to be about anybody else. Whatever, you know, you believe, stick it in there. And, um, you know, it says you live in the 21st century. Yes, we've been here for over two decades now. So when are we going to say you live today? <laughs> That's how I feel about that. So let's just take a look at some of our some of our things. Admin chat is right here. That is a chat that you can go in and discuss with other principals, other things that are going on. I do not know when admin chat is. So I'm going to leave that for you as homework to see. But on admin chat, they go in and they post a question. You listen to the question. You look at the question. You answer it with the same hashtag. So Q1 may be when is your start time today? Something as simple as that. Or so when is your start and end time? And then you would just go on Twitter and you tweet A1. My start and end time is from 8 o'clock to 3 o'clock. Hashtag admin chat. And then everybody who's in that chat, they see your answers. And they can respond to your answers and say, wow, dang, that's a long day. Or wow, how did you get away with not going so long? We went through, we've turned to district times and I really love that because we were looking at extending the day and that was not going to be good for my soul. So there, there's that. But the, here is where admin chat has been used. Dr. Caitlin Tucker, looking for one fun ways to end the school year to create closure, collect feedback and get kids to look forward. End of year activities. These are things that you can be sharing in your newsletter to your or your Hey Y'all board to your staff. Things that you have found on Twitter, things that you could help them with. You know, building administrators, you're supposed to be the end all, know all of everything, but that's a lot. You just need to be able to efficiently find it and come to the and come to it and no, have people in your corner looking that that know these things too. But here is a great place to find good ideas. Take them and make them your own. Here's another one. Let's say that you want to host a STEM day and you're talking with your school improvement team about a STEM day and they're like, what are we going to do for a STEM day? Well, you could Google it and go through a whole list of ideas or you can see what everybody else is doing. Okay, all the best ideas have been copied. And this is where they coded um, Ozobots to go from Earth to Mars. How cool is that? And you can kind of, you get to see some pictures. Sometimes if you, you're going through Google, you see those lists, no. So when you are doing your STEM day, you can be a resource for someone else by tweeting what's going on in your school. Tag your school. They didn't tag their school in this one. Good thing I looked up STEM instead. Tag some people that need to see it and share it. Okay, here, let's say that, you know, you, I'm really bad about, I'll hear what other schools are doing after the fact, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I want to do that, or I'll be in a, I'll get in a lull where it's rained for 40 days and 40 nights, and I'm like, oh, when the sun comes out, we're going to do something fun. So you can look up, you can look on, look on Twitter and see what people are doing. That's great outside. This is part of the STEM day that I looked up. But a water rocket challenge. I have never had a water rocket challenge in my school. But guess what? If I wanted to, I would know exactly who to message to find out how they did it, what they did, how much it cost, and if they would ever do it again. It's like having a ticket to Mount Olympus. And you might be that Mount Olympus for somebody else. So share your greatness. Again, I believe 
in North Carolina public education. There are so many great things going on. There are so many great teachers in our buildings. And the world needs to know. We need to control the dialogue here. Dr. Anna Brooks, y'all, I love her so much. She went to Appalachian. We did not go together, but I do love her. She is now in Davie County Schools. I believe I saw somebody with Davie County Schools. She's in Davie County Schools now. She left us for her husband's job, but she is really great about sharing greatness in her school. So this is something that she did for her staff. Aren't you glad we made it to spring break and had all orange staff? snacks. Isn't that the sweetest thing ever? Teachers love this stuff, but you know, I'm sure there's somebody that saw that that day and said, I'm going to do that. There's no need in re reinventing the wheel, friends. Dr. Anna Brooks has already done it. Just go ahead and get it from her. Let's say that you're like, okay, Marcia, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about communicating in the Twitter verse, okay? Um, you're going to get this session in Nieces later on. It's going to be available for you. If it's not already, I'm not sure. But in here, it has, I have a little tiny link on this page for you to go and think of even more things to try. And Facebook is a place that I go, if I, like today, I was going to post, Hello, friends. I need some kind of medical professional that can give my son a physical stat. Mother of the year. Um, I wouldn't put that on Twitter. That's not, Twitter is my professional space. Facebook is my personal space, except for there in that Wildcats, in that Wildcat area. Now, am I going to post anything in my Facebook that might be embarrassing to those who see me as a professional? No. If I miss an opportunity and I don't get a job or something, am I going to post how disappointed and how I'm going to give up on there? No, someone did that the other day. And I was like, I need to, te we need to get together so we can talk about this. But, um, you know, Twitter is just a great place. It's a great professional workspace for you to share the goodness in your building. Any thoughts? I feel like we need a minute to just like, whoo. I've given you a lot. Does anybody have any positive experiences or anything that they would like to share so far? You're like, no, Marsha, it's Friday. It's basically Friday. I'm a state employee and I get Fridays off. So I hear you. I hear you. We're going to move on. Twitter has changed the way I teach. Yes. Yes. Across the country, across the world, Dalton, across the world. Okay, so I'm going to give a plug for this because we are now on this great journey with the state that I really feel like needs more real estate in our minds. So we are great communicators. And you guys are always planning PD and putting presentations together. Or let's say you go somewhere and you go to a presentation and you think, I want to do that. Or you see a form somewhere that, or a, a infographic somewhere that you really like. And you're like, ooh, I wonder if they, if they would let me borrow that and use it. And then you have to go search for who led the presentation or you want to, you have to search who for led the meeting, email them, ask them. Then they have to go through 50 acts of Congress to find it and email it back to you if they can remember because they're so busy. Or we can just all agree that we're going to post things on goopen.com when we create great things, when we make great documents and we make great presentations and infographics and when our teachers have great lesson plans. Let's just agree that we're going to post them on here. Um, I feel like Go Open hasn't gotten the real estate that it deserves because, you know, we had Hurricane Florence and it really stunk. And then we had the COVID and that really redirected our thinking and we went into emergency remote learning. Um, but now it's time we're taking our masks off and we need to think. Go Open North Carolina for you guys, if you are not aware, is an open educational resource for 
North Carolina educators. And it is, I hate to say the word teachers pay teachers. Don't think that. Um, I mean, there's some quality stuff on there, but some of it is not so great. This stuff, I'm going to open right here. This is for North Carolina teachers. You can make it standards aligned if it's for children. And then let's say that someone find something on Go Open that they really like, but they want to tweak it just a little bit, that's okay. If the author's giving you permission, they're going to go ahead and have it to where you can do so. And you can do what we call remixing. And you can remix what they have already done. And it also already, it gives them the credit that they deserve the parts that they did. And then you can also, if you find a dud, you can leave a review. If you see something really great, you can leave a review. It is an awesome space and it just, it, it needs us. It needs us to put our greatness in there. We just did a, um, a session, not a session. We just got a grant with DPI. It was a planning grant and we did a book study on the distance learning playbook. And we had four sessions with teachers talking about distance learning and not just like virtual learning, but just looking at the situation and thinking, okay, how can we apply this to face-to-face -face instruction? And if we had to do this like virtual learning, how could we make that even better too? So it was a great, great opportunity. And we took every session that we had with those folks and we put it on go open. And every session they had half a day to plan a unit and guess what? Those are our exemplar teachers and they posted all their stuff on go open these great units. So it's a great place to direct your teachers, but it's also a great place to put your stuff so that you can share it with others and to find things. Um, you know, we have, we're we in a very small district. Um, so sometimes we don't have the funding to create the things that the big guys have. So we can go and look and see what Rowan Salisbury's put in there and grab some of the things that we want to use. And they're fine with it. They go and put what we're permitted to do with it. So it's a great space to collaborate with people all over the state. And it just doesn't get the real estate that it deserves. So I needed to give you some time with it. So that is go open. In the essence of time, we're not going to dig into this, but just know that you can access it through your rapid identity. So the smartest person in the room is the room. I've done a lot of talking and I don't like to do a lot of talking all the time. I like to give you time to, to discuss and everything like that. And I've had a few sessions like that today, but today I just needed to get it all out to you um, so you can take some time. But these are some great people in North Carolina that are, um, I put, let's see, we have Hamish Brewer. If you don't know him, you need to follow him on Twitter. He's amazing. I put Pinto Beans on here and Carrie because, and they're right aligned with each other. I put them on there because they are very young teachers that are doing amazing things. Okay. So when I am looking at STEM, I look and see what Carrie's posting because she's got some great stuff. Um, Pinto Beans. Her name is Christine Pinto, but she is, I think, a sixth year teacher. And three years ago, she was the keynote speaker because she's a great communicator. She was the keynote speaker at ISTE. And she wrote a book about how kinders can. And she does lots of things with her kindergartners with Google. And she's amazing. And to hear her speak, it's just very, you're very lucky if you can hear her speak. Um, Jimmy Casas, ha, he has written so many great things about culture of schools. I've shared with you some Anna work. Dee Lanier has just really warmed my heart when it comes to equity and thinking through a different lens, thinking about education through a different lens that is better for everybody. Marlo Artis, who's the Tar Heel teacher, he's just a gem, y'all. He is a North Carolina gem. And he has two podcasts. One is a, a daily, it's called, it's a daily podcast, and it's just about a pulse of education in North Carolina. But then he also has a weekly one where he invites people from all over North Carolina to just talk about the state of affairs and things and ideas. And it's so good. Um, Sam Galliard, 
He is an administrator in Forsyth County, I believe. And he wrote a book called The Pepper Effect. It's really great. And then we have Derek McCoy and Danielle. They are great administration mind writers and have written some excellent books as well. So these are just, if you're just getting started, these are some great people to follow and get some good ideas. I would, you know, I've gotten picky. I just don't follow anybody. I'm going to follow all y'all, but I don't, I don't just follow anybody. I don't want to cloud up my Twitter feed with garbage. So um, if you do have a Twitter handle already, go ahead and post it here in the chat so that we can follow each other and see how we're doing. So we can see what you're doing and you can see what we're doing. And it's just a, a great, great circumstance. All right. To be a master educator, you must be a master learner. So here are some great books that I have been reading lately and I, I keep them with me. EDU protocols. Fabulous. They just came out with three with another one, the third version. Um, I put educational eye exam because it's written by my friend Alicia Ray, who's another North Carolina rock star. Jennifer Lagarde, another North Carolina rock star, but she's moved to Washington State, but we still love her. And that's about just looking at media during this time and help sort through it all. There's so much. And, you know, we as adults, we're not very good at it. So how do we expect children to do so? Innovate Inside the Box. I've read it twice. It's um, Katie Novak and George Kuros. Half of it is about universal design for learning. And the other half is just acknowledging the fact that, you know, we have all these great ideas and things that we do want to do, but we have all these, we also have all these mandates and laws and restrictions and constraints. And how do we do that inside the box? How do we do what we want to do inside those parameters? really great. And I referred to the distance learning playbook earlier, but these are all great. I hope Brad Gustafson writes another Reclaiming Our Calling because I feel like we need a post-COVID. We should all tweet to Brad, hey, write a part two. Keep me posted. Let me know if there's anything that you need or anything that I can help you along your journey. Um, I have a former superintendent that reached out to me just like a month ago and said, hey, Marsha, I'm thinking about setting up a Twitter. Can you help me? And who should I follow and what should I do? And I was happy to help him, honored that he asked. And anytime you need something, shoot it. Now, in the school year, it gets kind of crazy. Stacy can tell you that there are some days I don't know my name. But if I miss you, it's not because I don't love you already. <laughs> So, but I always try to get with you when you need something. Oh, yeah. It's tweet NCDPIDTL, and you'll know that it is Stacy. All right, y'all. Oh, usually it's me. Sometimes it's not me. <laughs> if it's a typo, it's probably me. <laughs> you know, I'm really surprised that they haven't changed that feature. That's the only stinky thing about Twitter. If, it, if it's a typo, I realize it and then it'll come right back down. Did you see something and then it disappears? It's like, oh. <laughs> I call that the big thumb syndrome. I'm like, I'm sorry, my thumbs are big. Yeah, I always notice it like two seconds after I hit enter. So yeah. Funny. Yeah, and I, I just have to say, I picked Brave Neutrino as my... Um, Twitter handle way back when, and mm -hmm. I just can't part with it. So I, we it is know what it is. That. We know you as that. So yeah. you're good. You cool. I I tried to change. I was like, I was about to follow that advice to change no. my name, and I was no. like, no, ah. no, no. You are good just the way you are. Yeah, I even have you in my. The, my other sessions today that are geared towards teachers, I put you in there and my people to follow slide. Thank you very much. I need to, I'm going to show you just so that you know. I have the QR code up there, but I am going to throw this up here so that Stacey can see that I'm really talking business here. I believe you. I'm like, there's Stacy. 
She had some great sessions. We did our session on um, today was on dear, our book study on um, Dare to Lead. Mm -hmm. um, thank you again. Stacy, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm sure what you have to say is really helpful. <laughs> Best that you can't hear me at the end of the day. <laughs> I can't hear you. That's okay. I'm. I, I, why is my mic off? I don't. I. It says that it's on. It's on, but it's breaking up. It's breaking up. The it's internet kind of, is tired. Kind of, it is tired. We are all tired. Tap here to see the text in notes. Hmm. If you have scanned this code, I'm going to go ahead and advance to the next slide so that you can leave, take some time to leave a little feedback. I really appreciate all the feedback that you can send my way because I really enjoy teaching teachers, but I also do not want to waste your time. So um, I want to know what works, what was a dud. Send it all, send it to me. Daniel, I'm so glad that you came to this session because it's much better than my data session. <laughs> You're too hard on yourself, they were both good. <laughs> Thank you, Erin. And I'm going to stick your stuff on. Say Hi, girl. Me and my non-working mic are going to go. <laughs> okay. I love you. It was good to see you. Could you please put the QR code back up? Yes, ma'am. Let me you. let me copy this link real quick so I can stick it in the chat. This is not a pretty version of the link. It's ugly. Well, I'm going to stick that in the chat. Let's see. This is the feedback link to thank you this was very informative i learned a lot thank you so much oh good it's hard to tell when you're in a virtual space so i appreciate that Leslie Lowry, follow. Ooh, I like, ooh, I like Dalton's name, Tedder Time. That could be a book. Oh, 
follow. Follow Barnes Principal. Oh, you're at the lake in that. Dr. Aaron Manuel. Follow. All right, Miss Valerie, do you need anything? We are going to stop.